Hey, Suze. Hi. Here we are, episode two of the self exploration series. Yay. Woo woo. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. I feel like we have a really good topic today to yeah. cover off. As you know, I love this topic. I'm all about it. You are all about it. This is your world, and we put it out there again for those of you who follow us on Instagram at Suze Bubs and at Maria Jeswin. We put out a poll to our audiences asking what two topics, out of the two topics, what topic they would want us or what you would want us to talk about. And the two topics were, go ahead. Sensuality, so cultivating sensuality within and giving rise to our inner queen. I think that's how we described it. Yes. And then our opposing topic was movement, mm-hmm. um, which I don't recall what we said about movement. Movement. Um, shit. Yeah, it was using <laughs> your body to express your inner truth and process your shit. Yeah. So it was very, very close. And sensuality won by a shoestring. I think that's yeah. something people say. Yeah. And yeah, so today's topic is all about sensuality. Um, so cultivating sensuality in ourselves to give rise to our inner queens. And yes. yay. And Susanna is a sensuality enthusiast. You live and breathe sensuality. So this is the perfect, perfect topic for us to be chatting about. I've been waiting for this one (laughs) because I know we had it in a couple polls, but like it kept getting really close and like we carry over the topic that doesn't win out, right? So we've carried this one over a bit and just been waiting for it to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I'm surprised this doesn't win every time, but we've had just such great topics. So there's been one prior episode to this, which you can um, hear on the You Relationship podcast. You can watch the YouTube video of it as well. And that was all about thriving in solitude. Okay. So today, sensuality, let's start off with what does sensuality mean to you? Because I feel like there's different ways of perceiving what sensuality is. And I would love to get your take on it. Yeah. So, okay. I can go so deep into it right away, but I'm just going to start off small. And basically (laughs) the way that I see sensuality is, or I have come to see sensuality is it's a practice and a way of living Um, And it's all about connecting with our five senses, or you could say our six senses, but our physical senses, our five senses, um, and finding self-expression and like the truth of who we are through that. So that's kind of how I define it in a very overarching way. Um, And we have very like, there's a lot of preconceived notions of what sensuality is or how we've come to frame it in society and how we understand it. And none of them are necessarily wrong. I think that it's a very broad term for a lot of different things. But I think even in a traditional definition, it's about like our senses. Um, And to me, it's just deeply and divinely connecting to those senses and experiencing our world through them. So that's like my, that's my little quick way of describing it, but there's so much more. <laughs> there is so much more. And I, I feel like it would have been like, I'm curious what it says in the deck, di- in the de- dictionary, <laughs> in the dictionary, <laughs> um, because yeah, it obviously does have to do with the senses. Um, mm-hmm. Although you wouldn't think of that at first look in terms of how sensuality has been portrayed and and talked about, like it's not necessarily typically seen as being a sensual about the senses. And I think for me, when I think of sensuality, it really is about like deep presence Mm -hmm. um, and connection with like your heart in whatever you're doing. So it's like deep heart-based connection and whether it's what in whatever it is that you're doing um and it because it feels like 
yeah, it feels like something that you truly like, it's a feeling like sensuality yeah. is a feeling. Um, anyways, that's I agree. Yeah. yeah. It feels like something bubbles up when we're in that space that does feel like a feeling. It's like the way you would, I don't know, like describe sadness or happiness or joy. There's something different about the feeling of sensuality in your body when you're in that mode. Um, we should apply to register it as an extra feeling. <laughs> I know. I love that you've just tagged it as an emotion. Like, okay. Yeah. If, yeah. And in some way it is like, um, and I'm curious, like if you're, if you're watching or even just in your own self-reflection, like what words would you use to like describe sensuality? Right. So that's my question to the listeners or the watch or the viewers is, like when I think of sensuality, I think of like softness and texture and flavor and intimacy mm-hmm. and um, although intimacy is not an adjective, but like these are just some of the words that come up, right? And sometimes yeah. that gives you a better sense of what it is than the actual definition would. Absolutely. Or even like we picture a type of person in our mind who we would describe as sensual, right? So like, Mm. I mean, previous to when I've like started really working in that mode of sensuality and thinking a lot about it, growing up, I used to just think of like sensuality as like a very confident, sensual woman. Like that's what sensuality was. It was someone who was really tapped into her sexuality, So there was a certain way that like a person carried themselves who was sensual. They dressed a certain way. They moved a certain way. They spoke a certain way. Um, And I really saw it that way. And I don't know if that's just because we've like, we've kind of categorized it and packaged it for media and for like a societal understanding of what sensuality is. And I think that there is a component to it that's very feminine that's about awakening something within us as women. But I think it's like for anybody and everybody for awakening something within us. It's like a fire that lights up that helps Mm. us move through the world in a different way. But it's almost like, like I used to think of sensuality as like how you are in your sexuality, how you are in bed. And then that kind of trickling into your everyday life. But I now kind of see it as like, sensuality is about living passionately. So it's almost about like making love to life. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Which maybe sounds a little corny, but I, no, not at all. I sort of like that concept. Yeah. And that's a pretty common, I think, association that people as- associate sensuality with sexuality. And sometimes they refer to it as one and the same. Mm-hmm. Like I, yeah, I'd be curious, you know, if I feel like I should definitely do a poll around this is like asking, is sensuality and sexuality, like, do those go hand in hand for you? Do you see them as being the the same thing? Um, and if so, like, like, do they need to be? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. I think that in a way, like sensuality draws power from sexuality and vice versa. Um, Like, I really like that you describe feeling it in your heart because I've felt it in my heart as a feeling, but I've also felt it like in my sacral area, like in my sacral chakra, I could say, right? Like where you're womb is where your genitals are like in your pussy it, basically your pussy you your pussy I was like <laughs> waiting to hit that peak of that word or when to say it but yeah I'm reading that book and I'm trying to use the word pussy a lot more but um so thank you for that but yeah it's sort of like we're awakening like it's almost like that is our fuel you know what I mean mm-hmm. I think it can come from the heart space too but I think that it's awakened by that sexual energy or it can fuel that sexual energy and sexual energy doesn't only and necessarily pertain to sex. Like it's a way of living life too. Like you can channel sexual energy into 
creativity and to action and to the way you carry yourself. So like in some ways they do kind of connect and blend together. Um, so I can see why people, you know, like have them in their mind go hand to hand. Right. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you remember, like on the Food Network, there was this chef. I don't know if she's still around. I think her name is Nigella Lawson. Mm, no. Her show was like Nigella Bites. I hope I'm saying her name right. But she was characterized as a very like sensual person. And people loved watching her cooking show because she would like go downstairs in her silk robe, like in the middle of the night and like grab a piece of like this chocolate cake that she made earlier and just like eat it. That's and what they would show in the show. Like it's yes. like a live cooking show. Like it's like a pre-recorded cooking show. Or I what? mean, they like, they obviously set it up like as if, I mean, I think they filmed in her home, but they set it up as if she got up in the middle of the night to do that. And I think that she probably does maybe not with like all her makeup done and like all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, like even so interesting. in her regular cooking segment, she was very sensual about like, tasting it along the way and like enjoying it and you know I'm getting a little off topic or going on a tangent but um it made her very sexy to people so I think that like people tie sensuality and sexuality together as well because they might see someone who carries themselves in a sex in a sensual way and find it sexy Mm. you know yeah it makes me think about like a draw You know what I mean? Like people tend to, I think when you feel a physical draw to someone, it's associated with it being sexual in some way, Mm -hmm. although it doesn't have to be. Like, I feel like that sometimes can be confusing for, um, say, a woman who typically identifies as liking men Mm -hmm. and then meets a woman who is, say, very sensual, very like present in her body and like confident and just like connected and operating from like that woman operates from her heart and her pussy like you can tell Mm -hmm. I could see someone getting confused and being like whoa like I'm physically drawn to her does that mean I have a physical attraction does that mean I'm sexually attracted to her and it's like I, I, I honestly don't feel like there's enough I don't feel like there's enough that we share about and speak about and are aware of when it comes to like really understanding the physical draws of our body and why we are called to certain people or drawn to certain people and that it doesn't necessarily need to be like, is it sexual or is it not? Or is it platonic? It's (laughs) like, it can be in between. It can be neither. Like it's, it just is what it is. And I think that's maybe why some of that correlation happens as well. Yeah. It's really, really nuanced. Like we can be attracted to people's energy for so many different reasons or their body or their intellect or an attribute that we really love about them that we want to cultivate in ourselves. Or as I've heard you talk about before, and we've all talked about like, you know, being attracted to someone because of a wound that's Mm -hmm. attracting you to them that you need them to heal or you want them to heal. Mm -hmm. Um, Like there's so much to it. And I agree. It would be, it would literally be the same as just being like, well, are you happy or are you sad? Because there's (laughs) only the two and like, there's not, you know? Um, So I totally get that. And Mm -hmm. I think that like, there's a whole space for sensuality in sexuality because it can absolutely like, awaken and revolutionize our sexual experience to bring sensuality into it. Like it's a completely different feeling, you know, having sex when we're out of our body and we're not fully there and we're not fully present or we're like just in the motion of things or trying to reach orgasm and, you know, versus if you're like really reveling in the experience and enjoying every single step of the way and not rushing and loving your body and like all the visuals and everything you're feeling like it's a completely different world to tap into sexuality in a sensual way and that's not just with another partner but with ourselves right a hundred percent yeah and I feel like yeah like even you know sharing 
a meal with your with someone or with yourself and like making that into a sensual experience right and Mm -hmm. um like what would make a meal sensual versus making it sexual yeah right like oops there's like a fine (laughs) ow there's like a fine line between the two and it's just I don't know I know we're talking about like labels and words and descriptions it's just like that's how we operate as humans like we love our language but our language is also limiting um especially like in this situation in the English language but it's like (sighs) yeah I just I it's it's so it's just it's so interesting to me about how uh, also uncomfortable people can be with sensuality mm-hmm. and how it's like as soon as you start like talking about sensuality like people's blocks will come up yeah you know what I mean and be like oh that feels like sexual and I don't want to talk about sexual matters and it's like okay well it's not it's sensuality but then also why do you have these blocks around sexuality like I, I would just right. love for it to be like just more openly accepted and comfortable versus it like there's just so many judgments and meanings around it. Yeah. And I mean, I think we're very much like policed in how we express ourselves as women and like a lot of us in different, you know, gender and identity and racial stereotypes, religious stereotypes, like we're very boxed into what's appropriate and what's not. And I think that there are still a lot of values people are tied to in different realms that are, you know, that don't have space for that. It's not, it's not appropriate or it's not like um, professional or it's too intimate to show somebody. But sexual expression and sensual expression is one of the most natural instinctive things about us, you know? And I love that you brought up eating. Like I laughed because I've just completely been there. Like there's something inexplicable about it. How, I don't know, like watching someone devour a sandwich can be disgusting to me, but then it can also be such a turn on, like depending on how it's done. (laughs) Do you know that that's something that my mom, I remember my mom saying, she's like, the way someone eats is the way they are in bed. Really? (laughs) That's amazing. So I have to send you uh, on a personal note and hopefully like people listening and watching will seek this out as well. Um, there, or we could put it in show notes, but it yeah. doesn't really relate directly, but there was this, um, gosh, I forgot the name of the show, but it's like a, it's like a YouTube cooking show. It's like these chefs who emulate different candies and treats, like I don't know, like they try to make like a Reese's peanut butter cup, but like from scratch. Okay. I'm so angry. I can't remember the name. Anyway, they did this like special random episode on like food ASMR. So like all their cooks who we usually see in the context of just preparing food were doing ASMR, which if someone's not familiar, it's like the audio, audio sensory meridian response. I think that's what it stands for. So it's creating different noises and sounds that bring us pleasure. So it's actually a very sensual activity and connects us to sensuality too. So they just had like spreads of different foods and food ingredients that make sounds. And with mics there, they were just making them do things. <laughs> so there's this man who had a spread of citrus fruit And it is the most like sensual, sexy thing I've ever seen (laughs) because he just like tears apart these citrus fruits and like squeezes them and like whispers about what kind of like citrus fruit they are. Like, I didn't even know there was such a variety of them, but he's like ripping the peel off. And then like, it it was just, yeah. I love that. Yeah. If you find it, I'll do it. It's a must see. (laughs) Yeah, we got to share that. That sounds that sounds really hot to be honest. And I wasn't alone like when you look at the comments of the video, um he was very widely like celebrated for his segment being like the most successful in the in the episode. <laughs> wow, that's honestly would be so fun like if you're 
on a date with someone and being like, let's cook together and see how do they interact with the food. Like, I would not be a hot person to cook with because I'm like fumbling, I'm dropping shit, I'm like getting annoyed. But it's like, can you make it into a sensual experience? Mm-hmm. Like, if, and we, I know we talked about this in the last episode, but like that presence in, yeah. in cooking and yeah, I. I've yeah, and I think that. I think that it's also not a constant space that you're in. It's similar to like we aren't always in a Zen space, right? Like we can meditate and we can do things in a meditative way, but like I have times where I'm cooking and I'm all over the place and I'm not paying attention or I'm like dropping food everywhere. Like it's it's a it's an intentional practice for me to say that I'm gonna cook a a meal sensually and enjoy it sensually it's a different experience that I that I invite versus just doing it automatically right totally so like how did you how did you get involved in sensuality or become an enthusiast of it yeah so it starts I mean I thought about this a lot in recent months because I did want to kind of pinpoint, I was interested in pinpointing where it all began because it, it grew in such a natural, organic and almost unstoppable way. Like I Mm. kind of didn't know where it came from and I was surprised by it. And at first I wasn't making room for it in my life because I had my own stigmas about it. I mean, I too had blocks come up around, like, I can't publicly express myself this way. Like there's different roles that I play in my work life or in different facets of my life. You know, when I was married at the time, I was like, as a wife, maybe this isn't okay. You know, Um, not that I subscribe to those ideas. Like as a wife right now, I would be like, anything goes, you know, and my ex-husband was very supportive But I think where I can sort of like point it back to was um, a few years back. So this was in like, I think 2017, Um, you know, I was pregnant and pregnant with twins and then I miscarried at about three months. So that was a really difficult experience in my life. It was a really dark moment in my life. It took a long time for me to come out of it. I'm still healing from it. I think that it can be a wound that, you know, you carry for the rest of your life potentially, um, because it still comes up for me now. And at the same time, it was such a beautiful, blessed experience. It was unexpected. Like I'd always wanted twins. So it was such a like miracle out of left field thing to me. So when it went away, it was all that much more like, you know, the grief of it was why, what was the point of something like this to come about if it was going to disappear, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was my first time being pregnant as well. So like anyone who has been in that situation or can imagine just knows that like every day you're thinking about the pregnancy and like motherhood and your future that you're about to embark on right so it's very top of mind so no matter what point you're in when you miscarry of your pregnancy like it's just as valuable and relevant and important to mourn however you need to like nobody should ever tell you that oh well it wasn't a big deal because it was at this stage or whatever you know totally yeah so So having that experience in my body for those three months was so changing and, and like affecting. And I remember being really uncomfortable in my body, which is, you know, a natural thing as well, because it was changing and it felt awkward. And after I started to heal from that experience, I just remember like, it was maybe like three months after the miscarriage and I was just standing in the mirror about to get dressed and like saw myself nude. And I wasn't even really like, I hadn't been paying attention to how my body, you know, like my body had changed quite a, like it had already started changing on the outside, but a lot of it was internal feelings. 
but I did notice in that moment that it seemed like my body was just right back to square one. Like it was back to where it was before the pregnancy even happened. And it wasn't like a sad experience for me. It was like a revelation about how incredible and miraculous my body was. Like, I was just like, wow, like we just went through something so wild. I can't believe I carried, you know, like what would have been twins that my body started changing to adapt to that. And then it released everything and then recovered and that I'm back to the body I was in before. And it wasn't even about aesthetics or anything. It was just this like respect, this newfound respect I had for my body. And I can only imagine what it's like when you actually birth a human, you know, and come back from that. But I just remember having this thought, like I'm, it was almost like a pledge I made to love my body from that point on and treat myself differently. And, you know, I had struggled a lot prior to that with, um, a lot of like, I had a lot of challenges with getting dressed. Like I, I've written about it on my Instagram before and I found it such a weird, obscure thing to talk about, but like, because I didn't quite understand where it was coming from, but I just, every time I had to get dressed or get ready to go anywhere or just day to day, it was like a grueling experience for me. And I went to therapy for, you know, in general, but like to address that as well. And, um, just found that it had to do a lot with like putting pressure on myself, like a lot of self-imposed judgments, criticism, perfectionism, that kind of thing. And I just like looking at this body and everything it's been through, I was like, this is a new page. Like, I'm just going to start to adorn and treat my body like amazingly and give back to it. I don't know. That was just kind of the overwhelming feeling. Mm-hmm. And I had through therapy at the time, this practice that my therapist encouraged of like taking my whole wardrobe and removing every single item that had any negative connotation to it and only leaving whatever I felt amazing in. Cause we all know we have those clothes that were like, hell yes. And then there's clothes that are like, eh, you know, and then there's the absolute no's and we usually get rid of the no's, but I got rid of the maybes also. So I was left with like such a small fraction of my wardrobe, but then it's like, I started dressing and acquiring clothes for my new body Mm -hmm. and my new self. It felt like this reawakening or this new chapter. I don't know. Like a rebirth. Like a rebirth. Exactly. And that kind of started to, like, it started to cascade from there. Like I just kept building and building on that. And as I acquired these like new clothing items that I got really excited about, I started to take photos of myself in them. And that led to these like sensual photo shoots that I do and expressing myself that way. And I just started to find like more confidence in myself. The anxiety and challenges around getting dressed completely went away, like to the point where now it's an exciting thing for me. So it's, it's a pretty long, you know, story, like very layered story. And I still have to narrow it down, (laughs) um, to make it more succinct, but yeah, that's kind of, Mm. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it's, it's interesting how like some of the most difficult things that we go through will kind of point us in the direction of what we're meant to do or what will bring us so much joy and like that clarity that was able to come from it and like the physical freedom that Mm -hmm. you got out of it, you know, which most people wouldn't think about like that a a miscarriage would create. Um, And I think that's really cool and really powerful. And like, I went through a miscarriage as well. I think I was, it's honestly, it's even hard to remember. I think it was like maybe 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And for me, that's what propelled me into spirituality. Um, Because I was very similar to you. Like it was like something that I'd always wanted, something I always dreamed of. Got it. My life just like lit up. And then when it was 
gone, I was like, well, what's left? Cause this is all that I wanted and I can't even have this. Um, so it took me on a really incredible journey that if that hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be doing the work that I've done. Like none, none of it. Life yeah. would have been so different. Right. And yeah. Um, that's really incredible. And I, I feel like your experience with struggling to like get dressed, um, that's not, that's like a lot of women. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we do normalize the idea of, I don't know what to wear. I can't get ready. This is taking forever. Like we see it a lot in, in our pop culture and shows and movies. And I've thought about it because it's almost like presented as this indecision or we just have this like stress, but where does it come from really? You know? Well, it's, it's from the fashion industry. It's from the expectations that women need to look a certain way. Like fast fashion does contribute to it as well. Like the money that could be made off people feeling insecure about what they're dressed like, like there's so much there. Um, and like following fashion trends instead of following the calling of how you want to dress. I think maybe that was a huge part of it was I was now dressing for myself exclusively and how I wanted to feel and show myself in the world. And it didn't matter what was in style. You know, if you want to wear like a neon yellow cape, like, just do it. Why wouldn't you? (laughs) You Yeah, totally. And I think it's, I think, you know, like I've, I've had this like for a very long time in my life where it was like, I didn't want to stand out. My mom was always, you know, like the actress and like, Mm -hmm. like to stand out, like loved it, loved the attention. And I was always like, ah, like keep the attention away from me. And I even remember (laughs) this came up for me recently. It's so funny. Um, for my first communion, I, my mom got me this like beautiful, like floral dress. She's like, Oh, just wear this dress. It's so gorgeous. I'm like, I don't want to wear a floral dress. I want to wear a white dress. Like all the other girls, you know, Mm -hmm. like I don't want to stand out. And my whole life she was like, just stand out, be different, be different. I was like, no, I want to be the same because Mm -hmm. it was like, I, you know, so many of us just want to be accepted into the circle, into the group, whatever, whoever manages that. And it's like, we all just want to be the same. And it's like, but that's so not who we are. We are all so different. Um, We have different styles that we're drawn to. Like, and I love that you play so much in the space of clothing um, Mm -hmm. because it does very much so it's very much so an expression of ourselves. And if we can like liberate ourselves from wanting to look acceptable or fit in or be stylish, then we're already suppressing our inner expression and who we are. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot like, again, expressing our sexuality as well, like Mm -hmm. empowering, you know, it's that age old kind of argument about like, are we presenting ourselves for the gaze of like the person we want to attract or are we doing it for us you know because so many forces at play tell us how we're supposed to be sexy how we're supposed to dress so when you take ownership of your own sexuality the question is like are you really taking ownership of it or are you playing into exactly what's expected of you but I think you are taking ownership as soon as you decide what makes you feel sexy, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel confident, you know, um, you're taking matters into your own hands and you are catering to that uniqueness within you that wants to express itself. And so with sensuality, it's like that too. And, you know, it's funny to me because clothing would seem like such a superficial thing. Like why would clothing matter in the end? Why was it such a big draw for me in this sensuality work and continues to be. Um, And I'm not even a shopaholic or anything. It's not like I buy a lot of clothes, like to the contrary, like I'll kind of just grab pieces here and there that I get really excited about, or I'll find like thrifted things or hand-me-downs. And 
it's, it's not like it has to be, um, some big grand piece that I save up for or spend a lot of money on, but to each their own, like whatever calls to you. But I just think that, you know, choosing to adorn ourselves and dress for how we want to express ourselves. I think a lot about, like, I've brought this up before, but celebrities kind of tap into this. Like they have stylists, but if you picture like a celebrity on stage performing, they're at this like ultimate peak of expression through wardrobe because they have to dazzle, right? So like they're going to wear like a really out there fashionable like piece of clothes, like this outfit and whatever. Um, And it's like, what would your style be if you were a celebrity? Like if you were at the top of your game and you were standing before a stadium of people Mm. and you were going to, and you're choosing your like 10 out of 10 level loudest outfit, what would it be? And that's kind of an interesting thing to think about because it's probably so different for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's something about like feeling the, that you're valuable and worth enough to dress like that and stand out like that that you can bring into your everyday life. Um, I love that. Like royalty, like the monarchies of the past. And today it's like wearing these like velvet fur, like faux fur robes. Well, they probably wore real fur. Um, (laughs) Like jewels and crowns. I mean, yes, there's a whole part of it that they have like royal blood and that's why they're royalty. So they dress in all these expensive things. But I mean, if you're allowing yourself to be adorned to that level, like the amount of respect and reverence you have for your worth is just like crazy. It's, mm. You know what I mean? So you're yeah. kind of bringing that into your everyday life in small ways or in as big ways as you want to. Yeah. And I also feel like you can still be sensual in your, in the way that you dress and just in the sense, like, how does it want it? How do you want it to feel on your body? And that's something that's really important to me is like, I can't wear things that like stick to my skin or dig in in certain places. Like I have very like sensitive skin as it is. So it's like, if there's weird stitching on the inside of a top, like that will irritate me to the point where I will never want to wear it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for me, what's important for me to feel comfortable is like to just enjoy how it feels physically on my body. Exactly. Exactly. That's the key because with that wardrobe cleanse, a part of it was things like that. Does it feel like icky on my body for whatever reason? Get rid of it. It has to feel really good, you know? Um, and that's, that makes perfect sense. Like that's exactly how you want to go about it. And it's like, there isn't this ideal outward presentation of it either. You don't have to dress in lingerie to be dressing sensually. You can feel just as sensual in a really cozy baggy pajama set, you know, or onesie or like a robe And like, I've worn really baggy clothes where I'm kind of channeling a more 90s like R&B vibe. And I feel just as sensual as I might in this, you know, I'm wearing this like faux fur coat and like a tight turtleneck right now. Um, So it absolutely doesn't matter what the aesthetic is. It's how the pieces make you feel and how they allow you to like passionately celebrate your aliveness, like your presence, your unique presence, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's very much like, like you were talking about feeling that's touch, right? Sight is like how it looks on you and how like, you know, there are the external aesthetic things about you. Like maybe you randomly just decide you want green hair, you know, and there's a reason that it appeals to you. Um, So looking at things that you're desiring or that are coming up through the lens of your senses is, is part of like that practice and what makes sensuality such a more well-rounded thing than just, you know, connecting to sexuality. Mm, 
Yeah. I love that. So do you have anything that you can offer the listeners and the viewers regarding bringing in sensuality into their lives? Something that they can do that's like fairly straightforward and not overly complicated. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Like, so a while back, I have it in my highlights on my Instagram that anyone can go check out, but I did a 22 days of sensuality practice. Um, and basically, and I just chose 22 days cause that was like an important number for me, but, um, it was sort of arbitrary each day. I focused on whatever sense I felt like that day. So I wasn't particular about which sense it would be just what called to me that day. And then I chose an activity to honor or channel that sense. So obviously I went through like repeating a bunch of them over the 22 days, but I posted like the different things I did and the insights I got from it. And um, so I would say for a week, which is like a perfect sample for like, let's say five days, right? So in a given five day period, focus on a different sense each day. So do sight the first day, do smell, do hearing, um, do touch, and then taste, whatever order you want. Mm -hmm. And on the day of that sense, just focus on and tap into the things that bring you pleasure through that lens of experience. So what kinds of things do you want to see today if you're doing sight? So think about your surroundings in your home. Think about maybe the outfits you're wearing or think about where you're going to step out. Like, I think we talked a lot about this in our previous episode, but cultivating like a, why, where did we relate this to? It was a similar idea. We're talking about nature? Yeah. Like cultivating your experience of solitude. That's what it was in our solitude episode. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, choosing what you want your surroundings to be, um, you know, and even what you pull up on your screens like whether maybe you want to look at a flickering candlelight or a book Mm -hmm. instead or look at yourself in the mirror and then I won't go through them all but like with smell for that day maybe you're gonna bake something to create a scent in your home or use a certain type of essential oil or perfume that you like so There's so much that can happen. And what really excites me about that kind of practice is like through the exploration of sensuality, you get to know yourself because you're going deeper beyond like, oh, I like comedies and I like animals and I like nature. It's like, what do you specifically like? Mm. Like, What are the specific little things that light you up and bring about that sensuality? Because that's like your soul being actively connecting with this world through these senses that we're given for reasons we don't really know, but it works for our bodies. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so there has to be a higher divine purpose to it, you know? Totally. I love that. I, um, like I was just reflecting and then right now I'm kind of in a funny space just because I'm bumping around between different Airbnbs and don't necessarily have like a permanent house yet. Um, but something that is really important to me in my prior home was like, and it's still important in these temporary places as well as like having a space that does feel like all of my senses are being stimulated in positive ways. So it's like, I always have essential oils um, being diffused. Um, I play music that I find is high vibrational and makes me feel good. And then it changes too, depending on my mood. Um, what I wear around the house, like, you know, I'm throwing my bra off like right away if I'm even wearing one and putting oh, yeah. on like my coziest, softest pants. Like, <laughs> I don't understand when people can wear jeans all day at home. Like, I'm mm-hmm. just not one of those people. Um, and of course, from a site perspective, it's like, how can I make this all so aesthetically pleasing? Because the second I notice any one of my senses are not, are off or are not like being stimulated in a positive way, it throws me off. It's like when you're in a mess, yeah, you know, like all you see is the mess and it throws off your equilibrium. Like, so like, what if it was all 
you know, just bringing in a plant or hanging something that makes you feel good or whatever it is. Exactly. And I think it's so key that you brought up like being in transition between homes because like I'm not in a permanent place either. And I've hesitated around that as well, like building in these things because I'm not here for good. But you can you can create and cultivate that practice anywhere. And something as small as a candle you really like is going to make a difference, even if you're in a space that you don't like, you know? Totally. Yeah. One of the first things I did was like, like I have like one of the plants here, like literally bought like little tiny plants that, cause I was in a basement Airbnb, like not a lot of light. It's like, okay, let's bring some plants that can persevere here. And then I'm like traveling around with these like two little baby plants. <laughs> But I, and then I have all of these like rocks and crystals that I found at the beach here. And I like, wherever I go, I just take out all my things that I know will make me feel at home and make me feel like it's my space and support me. Mm -hmm. My diffusers out, like it's just my Oracle cards. Um, Absolutely. All of that. I love it. You mentioned um, the aspect of like a deeper purpose around sensuality. Um, And I think of like, like the spiritual side of sensuality as Mm -hmm. well. Because when we're fully in our senses, like we're actually like celebrating and living our lives to the fullest in a way. You don't have to be doing things. You can just be present to really tap into spirit, to tap into yourself, to tap into the divine. And what's your take on that? Like how is sensuality spiritual to you? Yeah, I think it absolutely is because like I mentioned, um, I think I brought this up in our last episode too, because I went on a whole existential sidebar, but like, why are we in these like humanoid forms, right? Like, why are we given eyes to see and a nose to smell and a mouth to taste? Like we kiss each other with our mouths. Like there's, when you remove yourself from it, you're like, it's such a random thing. Totally. All the, it's all so <laughs> random. We could it's have- kind of gross, actually, when you think about it. Our mouths have so much bacteria, and we're just like, <laughs> <"Bleh."> <laughs> like let's we're exchange bacteria. Times. And I know, I'm sorry for anyone, I know it's COVID times, and that might be a little intense for you to hear, but like- mm-hmm. It's true. It's, it's kind of a funny thing to do. But then it's like the last thing we're thinking about when we're in a moment of an enjoyable makeout session, right? <laughs> totally. Yes. So it's, it's pretty amazing. We could have been any form of anything. Um, and yet here we are. So I know the functions it serves our anatomy. That's obvious. But I've thought about like the deeper purpose and you know, I don't even have that answer. Like none of us do, but I like to think that there's something about like exploring if we're an avatar, right? If we're an avatar that our soul is feeding into and we're given these lenses through which to explore the world, why wouldn't we explore it to the fullest to learn everything that we can, Mm -hmm. not only about the world around us, but ourselves and how we want to connect to this world around us? Because it's a completely different experience staring at a tree versus a building. And I might get something completely different out of it than you would. And I might find the building more, I don't know, enticing and inspiring than the tree and there's some deeper reason for that that might connect to some kind of future purpose or job I have maybe I'm drawn to be an architect versus being drawn to nature right so like to me it's like you're I've described it before as like your senses are kind of a road map to figuring out who you are what you're destined to do you know, what your um, skills are, what you're good at, um, the utmost expression of who you can become or who you're meant to become in this life. So that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. And it helps you connect with your body too. So when you are connected with your senses, then you're connected with your body and your body is your best guide for what brings you pleasure, what like just clarity comes from our physical bodies. Um, And that's something that I not my, not only me, but like something I didn't come up with this by any means, but 
like operating from the space of your body versus your mind. Mm -hmm. You're going to have total, you're going to make totally different choices. You're going to feel different. Um, so it's cool that working with your senses allows that. It allows you to be a lot more also just intuitive and clear on, on what's best for you and what makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we know so much from so many like teachers and speakers, um, about how divine like presence is the idea of being present and mm -hmm. just, you know, presence period, mindfulness. And like, um, our senses allow us, I think, to connect to presence in a passionate way. So totally. I agree. I think they go hand in hand, sensuality and presence and mindfulness yeah. and all of that. Are there anything like, so something that we like to finish or like complete our episodes with is what we call the path to self-exploration. And it's something that you as listeners can or viewers can do on your own time to kind of explore things further. Susanna gave some great practices that you can do over a week and working with your different senses and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, but is there something that somebody can do just like, like, what do you do on a given day that allows you to practice your sensuality or connect with it? Mm. Like, what did you do today like that was sensual? Thing? Yeah. Okay. That's actually a great question. What did I do today? So Not I to put think, you on the spot. no, it's a, okay. So like, I mean, even the way I <clears throat> set up for this conversation, I thought about what I wanted to wear that would feel sensual. And actually it's kind of funny because I had this like velvet top that was a bit more revealing and like, you know, sexy and risque that makes me feel really sensual that I love, but I put it on and I just wasn't quite feeling it. I wanted like a more cozy, mm -hmm. you know, so I went with this like turtleneck, which is like this like stretchy texture that I love and this faux fur coat that I've worn way too many times in all my photos and videos. I need like more <laughs> variety. Um, but then I just took care for my own like s satisfaction to set up my space a little bit. Um, I have chocolate on the side, like ready to enjoy. Okay. I have this like crunchy coconut snack <laughs> also for variety. Not that like we were planning to eat <laughs> while we're recording this. Just in case. I love it. Yeah. Just in case. I also, if you're watching the video version, I can show like these beautiful candles that I got that have these like dried Ooh. flowers in them. Oh, gorgeous. So I lit these tapered candles. Where did I you get those in case me. someone is as, is curious? Do you remember? Actually, they were a set I ordered from Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters. Oh, yeah. they have great home stuff. Yeah. They really do. They really do. Um, yeah, and I made myself a hot cup of tea. So I kind of like set up this space, mm. like a sensual, uh, like you were talking about, like, a surrounding that is pleasing all of my senses right now. Ooh, I love that. So yeah, your sensuality can like, if you're, if you're looking for a way to practice it or just bring more of it in, it's literally doing what Susanna did, right? It's like, how can I just like in this moment, do everything possible for my senses to feel good for me to feel supported for me to like feel good. Um, mm -hmm. And incorporate that and think about the different senses and also yeah think about you know if you're into well if you're into food who isn't into food like what you're going to put in your body as well mm -hmm. um and then of course you can also do it in a sensual way which is involving presence and um, yeah. appreciating all of it. And I think we talked about that in the last episode too. Um, yeah. Have you had practices like you've embarked on that have helped you feel sensual or tap into totally. it so far? Yeah. I find something that really works for me is like, just like touching myself, mm. you know, like, just like, mm, like, just like touching my body and like enjoying the experience of my own touch you know, like touching my hair, like just like moving my body while touching it. Like all of that for me feels very sensual. It totally shifts me into my body. 
Because yes. like, so like literally if I were to do that and then probably something that would be really helpful is like every hour in the day now it's like one minute of self-touch and movement um, makes me feel a lot more sensual and connected and I'm really loving and I feel very connected to like dim lighting. Mm-hmm. Um, it just like right away just like sets the space and makes it more sensual. Totally. Just, and like, even though I feel like I can't see as well, um, it completely changes like the ambiance and the way that I feel. Yeah, well. I agree. It's a good way to actually adjust to like winter blues. <laughs> mm. um, as the days get darker, even though we kind of resist it because of how dark it is so soon, but there's some like helpfulness or adaptation in being like, okay, like I'm going to switch to my dim, cozy, peaceful lighting, like Mm. five. (laughs) Yeah. That's such a great idea and a great way to, uh, like disconnect, right. Mm -hmm. Disconnect for unplug, I should say, and like connect with yourself. Um, I love that. Thank you for sharing all of your sensuality wisdom. Yeah. My pleasure. Did you give your, um, path to explore? Yeah. I think it's just talking, talking about, um, hmm. Yeah. You know what I'll say, like do or try out what I mentioned, like find one thing that makes you feel more connected to your body or more connected to your sensuality and then do that every day, Mm -hmm. you know, just do it every day and see how differently you feel. Um, and then allow that to expand from there. I like that. It's like a nice place to just like start with something focused and that works and then it can enlighten the rest of the way. Totally. And if you want inspiration, check out Suze's Instagram and her content because she is always in that energy and in that space. And you're on TikTok as well. And I, you put out some great stuff on TikTok. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing a lot there too. I think it's also at Sue's bub, which again, it's like Sue's bubs on Instagram, but it's Sue's bub everywhere else. So you can find me on TikTok too. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, well, thank you again for today. It was an absolute pleasure and we will be sharing the next two topics to choose from. Uh, not next week, but the week afterwards. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Thank you. This was awesome. Can't wait to do more. (laughs) Pleasure. All right. Bye.